Game one of the Habs season is officially in the books, and it wasn't so painful. We'll talk about the Habs season opener and more. This is Hockey Inside Out. Hello and welcome to Hockey Inside Out. I am your host, Jessica Resnack, and we finally have some meaningful hockey to discuss. The Habs season opener, they lost 6-5 to the Toronto Maple Leafs in a shootout. So let's bring in the panel. We've got Stu Cowan from the Montreal Gazette. We have former NHLer Stanley Cup champ and former assistant coach with the Montreal Canadiens, Rick Green, and Andrew Berkshire, program director of Game Over at SDPN Sports. So we know it's only one game, We have to remain level-headed. But what did you like about last night's game? What gives you some sense that this team might be moving in the right direction? Rick, let's start with you being the former NHL player. What was your thoughts? Well, I was was impressed, uh, you know, other than not getting the the results that they wanted. I mean, uh, Allen played very well. He gave a couple of questionable goals, but overall he gave the team a chance to, to win. But Looking at the big picture, I thought that the team played uh, the game or stayed to the, the game plan very, very well. And, you know, they didn't play any type of high risk plays. They didn't force situations that weren't there. And, uh, you know, they were in control and, and were effective in, in you know, the, the type of game that they played. So, uh, you know, m- moving forward as uh, we're looking down the long season, you got a lot of good things to build from uh, with this group. And, you know, if you look at um, the impression uh, that the Doc line gave with very, very effective in, you know, uh, both offensively and defensively, nice to watch, but uh, really, really happy to see uh, a lot of these guys buying into the program and sticking to it for the whole uh, 60 minutes of the game. Just did you say level-headed? You expect Canadians fans to be level-headed? <laughs> that's optimistic. <laughs> that's that's a big ask. Um, I think the most positive thing is they were able to score and and on the power play. And offense has been a huge problem for this team for for quite a while. Alex Newhook, the newcomer, getting two goals in his Canadians debut, he's looked really good right from the first day of scrimmages in Brossard. He's just a he's got speed. He's got a work ethic. He played well with those two guys on the line. What a pass from Slavkowski to him for uh, for his first goal. Slavkowski looked really good. That's the best I think he's looked in the NHL. Um, the power play, as I mentioned, the power play scoring. Um, I think the goaltending, as, as Rick mentioned, I, I think Jake Allen made some huge saves, but he also let in some bad goals. And I think that deflated the Canadians uh, at, at points in the game. But for starters, I mean, it was Marty St. Louis. I like Marty St. Louis after the game, too. He was positive. I mean, it was, it was a roller coaster ride. And it's going to be a roller coaster ride with a young team this season. But they were able to score. They got a point. You know, when they were down 3-2 after the second period and they had only two shots on goal in that second period, if you had said to most Canadians fans, if they can get a point out of this game, will that be a good night? I think people would have said, yeah. So they came away with a point. It was a crazy game. And I've written many times that this team will be fun to watch. Uh, it'll be hard to get a more entertaining game than that one. though. That was, that was crazy. Yeah, that was a fantastic game to watch. Four distinct lead changes, or not lead changes, but uh, momentum right changes lead. in that game. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of lead changes. Were there four? There might have been four <laughs> changes. Yeah. It was crazy. You know, it, it was really fun. I think that the way the Canadians played was actually quite impressive. Uh, I didn't expect them to stick with Toronto uh, that well in the first and third. Uh, second periods, they were a problem all last year. Seems like it's a problem early on this year as well. But uh, there's a, a a model that shoots out uh, player cards after every game and says like how players played based on this model. And every single Canadians player was above like par defensively. That's a good sign for a team that really struggled defensively. Now that they still allowed five goals, still the Toronto Maple Leafs they're playing against. They took a lot of penalties. I think some of them were a little bit chintzy. Uh, I think the Leafs were very fortunate that uh, that offside review rule exists. I think they made the right call based on the replay, but it's it's such a dumb rule. It's such yeah. a dumb rule. Like, can we just not have a litigation every time we don't perfectly synchronize crossing lines? Is that what sport we're looking at here? That's not important. Taking away a goal that nice for such something that didn't impact the play at all just sucks but uh overall really strong performance by the canadians didn't go away you know i think after that second period it could have been very easy for them to 
pack it up and look for the next game, but they didn't. And I think that's really encouraging. Well, the, the other thing from that game, and Arbor Jack, I, I mean, with all the hype in Toronto about Ryan Reeves coming in and him skating out for the opening and flexing his muscles, uh, <laughs> I think he got a surprise from Arbor Jack guy. I don't think yeah. he, maybe he realized just how strong Arbor Jack guy is. And Arbor took offense to the what I thought was a dirty hit that Reeves put on, on Gooley behind the net from behind. Uh, and he went right at him. And I think one of the things Arbor's got to learn this season is to pick his spots because he's too. they lost him for 17 minutes or whatever it was in, in penalties and they were down to five defense. But I think that was an, a good spot for him just to send a message you know, the Leafs with all the hype about Ryan Reeves and Boston bringing back Luchik and they're going to run guys over. Well, Arbor Jack guy isn't afraid of anybody. He's a big, strong kid, as we saw. I mean, Ryan Reeves is like 230 pounds, and, and he threw him into the net. And the other thing I liked about Arbor is after that, you know, I put on Twitter, Twitter I hope for the rest of the game he just ignores Ryan Reeves. Like, play hockey. Let Ryan Reeves try to play hockey. Arbor Jack guy can play hockey, and that's what happened the rest of the game. So I think for Arbor Jack guy, he's, he's too valuable to be sitting in the penalty box for that long. But I think he sent the message, like he did last season with Jack Cassian earlier in the year, that the Canadians won't be pushed around. And yeah. um, I think that's important on a young team, and on a young team that has small players like Newhook and Caulfield and guys like that. I think that was, a, a, an, a as I said, I think he picked his moment well. Yeah, and if, it, if it was just the hit on Gooley, maybe Jack guy doesn't go after Reeves, but he hit – uh, Ulanen, yeah, that's like right. Very Same late, point. earlier in that same shift, and after that shift, Ryan Reeves didn't really factor into the game. Mm-hmm. And, and I think really it was just a matter of time before these two guys were going to, uh, yeah. you know, to to tee off against each other. And you know, hats off to uh, Jack. I uh, he's a character guy. He's he's a guy that, as uh, Stu uh, talked about, he he can play. And w- one thing about him is. Uh, he knows what his role is, and I think that uh, the opposition is going to be quite aware that uh, they're not going to mess with a, a number of their players. And uh, a really, a really good kid that's going to get better with time. And uh, he adds a, a really good ingredient of toughness on that blue line that's going to allow uh, some respect throughout the league. And I, I mean, think, you know, what everyone was kind of just looking for was wanting to see some entertaining hockey. In game one, right. they came out with some entertaining hockey. You know, Alex Newhook making his Habs debut, getting two goals there. Uh, so a lot of good stuff to take from this game. One thing, Martin St. Louis and a few players I noticed afterwards were talking about, you know, learning how to control those emotions, not to get too high, not to get too low, especially that second period and when that third goal was recalled and they didn't really have that kind of energy that they, that they really needed. Um, so, you know, obviously it's a loss. They got a point. Uh, there are a lot of positives to take from it, but there are a lot of concerns as well. So I'm curious to see the other side of the coin. Uh, what do you think? What What's a concern? What's something that you took away from the game? Andrew, we'll start with you. Uh, I think the most concerning thing, and I, we got to give everyone some time to, to find their legs, right? But Watching Brendan Gallagher in the preseason and now this one, oh, he looks slow. He he doesn't have that pep in his step that we're used to seeing from Brendan Gallagher, and he's reportedly healthy, which to me is very concerning. Uh, you look at how much longer his contract is, and you know how little producing production he's had over the last couple of years after dealing with all these injuries. I I think I really liked the top six. I thought they played really well in the roles that they were given the Pearson Gallagher Monahan line, I think is just too slow. They're going to have to split those up and maybe put like Ulanen or Harvey Pinard on one of the wings instead, just to get some speed going and some energy on that line because Pearson wasn't bringing it. Monahan was doing his best, uh, but, and Gallagher wasn't bringing it either. It, it's one game, but it's something to watch. Yeah. And, and for Monahan, I think he, I mean, he's such a smart hockey player and I think his talents are almost wasted on that line. Like I'd rather see him playing with Caulfield and Suzuki or playing with some speedier guys that he can feed them the puck. But you're right. You know, Andrew, I, I've been in Brendan Gallagher's corner. The guy lives and dies with the Canadians. The work ethic is always there, but it's just, we didn't notice him that much last night. Like you usually notice Brendan Gallagher, whether he's creating havoc in front of the net or whatever. And it's early in the season, but, in training camp, it was sort of a similar thing, and it's going to be a concern. As you mentioned, was it four more years on that contract? Um, it's tough. And, I mean, Rick, you would know better than anybody. Like, when you start realizing you're at the end of the career, it, it must be really hard. And Brendan Gallagher, I say the work ethic will always be there. But 
when you're working that hard and it's not happening, I think that's got to be a tough situation for a veteran player. And he doesn't look so excited, uh, you know, about playing anymore. And again, this, you know, this might just be uh, a quick judgment after the first game, but, you know, we remember, you know, Gallagher is a guy that's an energy guy and doesn't seem to have that energy. So unfortunately, uh, uh, things are, are, are not the greatest for him now, but, you know, he's, uh, as an athlete, he's the one that realized that and he can control that and hopefully he can find a way to uh, to up his game. But, uh, you know, obviously uh, it's not the, the Gallagher that we remember. And, you know, a, another area of, of concern that I uh, have seen is uh, their inability to, to clear the puck on, on their penalty killing uh, a number of times just uh, it comes back and haunts you. And, you know, they, they got to make a real concentrated effort on you don't get a second chance uh, against a good team like Toronto or anybody with a good power play to get it almost out of your zone. And, uh, you know, finding a way, a little extra, uh, you know, oomph, if you will, to get that puck uh, out of the zone will allow them a better opportunity to do a better job on their penalty killing and have uh, better results. So anyways, uh, it's early. It's, uh, it's always uh, easy to judge after one game, but, uh, you know, the overall picture with what they have, providing they can stay healthy. Uh, they got a really good group of uh, talented, skilled young guys that are going to develop with time and going to be fun to watch. Well, they had a hard time getting the puck out of their zone after the least pulled the goalie with, what, five minutes yeah. left or whatever it was. I mean, they had chances. In their defense, the players the least put on the ice in that situation is almost like an all-star team in some ways. Uh, but no, they didn't get, they couldn't get the puck out and the least scored two goals after they, they pulled the, pulled the goalie to get back in the game. And just, we haven't read uh, one of the positive notes. I got two goals from the fourth line. And yeah. Marty St. Louis had said, you know, before the season started, when he asked what identity he wanted from his fourth line, he said, I don't want them to play like a fourth line. And they didn't last night, but the real fourth line last night was Monaghan with, with Gallagher and Pearson. They were the third line, but they were, they were the fourth line and they, unfortunately played like a fourth line, which is not what Marty St. Louis wants from his fourth line. So I'm sure we're going to see line changes uh, for Saturday's game at the Bell Centre against the Blackhawks. And what about uh, the goaltending situation? A unique year. They started the year with three goaltenders, um, probably to make sure that no one was picked up off waivers. Uh, but what did you think of Jake Allen getting the start? Do you think he deserved it? And do you think he should get the start going forward? Andrew, what do you think about the goaltending? Well, I, I think Jake Allen would have been a fantastic goaltender in the 1980s. Uh, he lets in the soft ones once in a while, and then he makes these incredible, incredible saves. Like in overtime, mm-hmm. it was like three or four that oh, he made. They were astonishing, you know, to keep the Canadians in it and, and preserve their opportunity to get to a shootout. But yeah, the, the Noah Gregor goal was not great. I thought the second Austin Matthews goal where he kind of slid it in from the side, the old Plakanich special was not great to be caught off guard like that. And frankly, I didn't think the tying goal was that great either. Like uh, to give up those two goals late with the net empty is one thing, but for both of them to be of the weak variety is, is not encouraging. Uh, I would say Sam Mondebo will continue to be the, the guy who gets more games, but I don't think it's a bad thing that Jake Allen gets more games than in the average backup or starts started the game against Toronto. He's historically been pretty good against Toronto. So I understand that choice. And Montembeau didn't have a great preseason either. So making him earn it again isn't going to hurt him. Yeah, I mean, Allen, made, as you mentioned, made some great saves in overtime. He made some great saves when they were down 3-2 also to yep. keep them in the game. But those weak goals are, are so deflating. And I understand Marty St. Louis' decision to start Allen in the season opener. Neither him or Montembeau had a good preseason. Allen's a veteran guy, uh, sort of a respect thing. He's the number one guy. If Montembeau had stolen the job in preseason and played much better than Allen, I think Marty St. Louis would have started him. But I think the plan probably all along was we'll start Allen in Toronto and then we'll give Montembeau the home start uh, against the Blackhawks Saturday night. I think even if Allen had played well, I think Marty probably would have done that. Since Allen struggled a bit, I'm almost certain Montembeau will be in goal Saturday. So that's sort of a fair trade-off. You give the veteran the start season opener and you give the local – Quebecois guy to start for the home opener at the Bell Center when I get the big ovation from from the fans and whatnot. But, you know, I wrote a column last week saying I think they're going to have to split the goaltending duties between these two guys because neither of them is really a number one goalie. Allen has shown that 
the more he plays, the more his game sort of falls apart. So I think we're going to see sort of a rotating basis, but um, unless one of them really steps up and plays, you know, Monta was a contract year. He has a lot to prove this season, um, but I think we'll see more of a rotating basis with the goalies. Yeah, I agree with you on that, Stu. I think that, the, you know, both have shown that they're they're able to do the job, whether or not, you know, they ride uh, one guy that is a little hotter than the other. But uh, let's face it, that's a, that's a tough position. And, you, you know, we always remember the goals, the soft goals or the questionable goals that were let in. And, you know, in, in this game today, uh, one bad goal is too many, and they're going to have to really strive on, you know, uh, going with the, the hot hand, if you will, and, and giving themselves a, a chance so that they can try and keep the, the bad goals down to a minimum. But uh, we've, we've seen it in the past. They, they complement each other as far as, you know, being able to work together uh, in one game, out one game. Uh, we've seen that work. And now uh, if, if they can stay healthy, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see some progression there. Well, I had a conversation with the NHL scout last season about the Carey Price situation. He had a great quote. He says, you don't appreciate outstanding goaltending until you don't have it anymore. And I think Canadians fans for a long time maybe took for granted games that Carey Price would keep them in that they had no business being in and games that he would win single-handedly. And now we're seeing when you don't have them there that it can be, it can be difficult some nights. All right, moving on to our rapid fire round. I want to get some predictions from you guys, and we will go back to this at the end of the season and see who's right. So many experts are expecting Cole Caulfield to hit that 50 goal plateau. What do you, what do you think? Over under 50 goals this season? Rick, you start us off. Uh, uh, look, at, I think he'll, he'll be under the 50 goal mark. I mean, uh, last year, 46 games, he scored 26, uh, you know, with an injury uh, shortened season. But if you watch this kid, every time he's on the ice, he has an opportunity to score and he, he is deadly when it comes to accuracy. But, uh, you know, I, I foresee him getting somewhere over the 40 mark and uh, you know, just, uh, <laughs> just, just fun to watch and just a, just a natural goal scorer. I need a specific number from you. So when we go back, I can 45. say you're right. 45? 40, 45. Yeah. Okay. Andrew? I'm going to say 48, but the real question is how many will be disallowed on offsides? I'm, I'm, bitter, I'm bitter about how dumb that <laughs> review is. I know it was the right call. Don't come at me, but yeah. they need to change that rule. Uh, I'm going to say 40 because Canadians fans might not want to hear this. I just think at his size, it's going to be, he's never played a full season. And I think that will take a toll and you hope he can stay healthy through a full 82 games. Uh, we'll see if that happens, but I think a full season will take a toll on him. And I think there might be some periods where he doesn't score as often as that. So I'm going to say he will hit 40. Okay. Alex Newhook, his career high is 14 goals. He got two goals in the season opener. What are your predictions for the year? Stu? I'm going to say 25. He's already got two. But um, to go from 14, he's going to get a lot more ice time here. He's going to get power play time. As, you know, as I mentioned, he's been so good right since the start of training camp. His work ethic is Brendan Gallagher-like with speed and a lot of skill. So I'm going to say 25, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it's more than that. I, I mean, the line he's on uh, is quite impressive, which is, uh, obviously helps out uh, you know, his, his chances of scoring. And you know, I, I would... I would be, uh, you know, I would be guessing the 25 goal mark too would be, you know, he averages around, he has average in his short career, almost 15, uh, you know, give him 20, 25 goals to, uh, uh, for his mark for this year. I'm going to be a little bit more conservative uh, on new hook. I think he's going to be around 18, but it's going to be a really good season. Okay. What about Josh Anderson? Do you see him hitting 20 goals or more, or do you think 20 goals will be a struggle for him this year? I see him at hitting 20. I think now that he finally got to 20 last year and had a healthy season, you look at him last night. Uh, I didn't think that he necessarily had his best chances, but he had great plays. He was sticking with that top line better than I think he has in recent memory. I think Josh Anderson gets like 21, 22. I'm going to say 25. Because I think just Marty St. Louis, we saw it in the preseason. He had three goals in the three preseason games. He's, he's been able to teach Anderson how to find open spots on the ice and not just go 100 miles an hour or up and down the wing, sort of slow down and find open spots. Uh, he's proven he can score 20 goals. 
Uh, he's going to find open spots. I don't know how long he's going to stay on that number one line with Caulfield and Suzuki. I don't think he's that great of a fit there, uh, but I'm going to say 25 goals. Yeah, you know, you, you question the fit with that line. I mean, he's, as we know, with his speed, his size, and he's kind of a, a straight line player. But, uh, you know, playing with those two guys, he'll get to the net. He'll uh, he'll create opportunity for those other two guys. But uh, I, I think a 20-goal uh, season would be uh, a pretty good guess uh, for, for Josh Anderson on my, in my sight. And Kirby Doc, he's got the potential to have a breakout year. What are your expectations for him? Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to go with a 25-goal mark uh, for him. He's... Um, you know, again, he's still young, still trying to uh, figure out uh, what kind of game he needs to play. But he has the skill and the ability to uh, to make things happen. And like I said, uh, a lot of the teammates are a big part of the success of the individuals. And uh, he's got a good group there. But, you know, give him 25 goals. I'm going to say 20. He's more of a shooter, as more of a passer than a shooter. Uh, I think if he can score 20 goals, that'll be a good season for him. I'm going to go with 25 for Doc. I, I think he was on pace for 20 last year, like just under 20 when he missed time. Uh, he looks really determined this year. That line looks really good. We know that he can play with multiple different kinds of players. Like It seems like no matter what line he's on, that line is pretty strong. He's going to get power play time all year on the top unit. The Canadians have, I think, more skill on the wings to complement him this year. He's going to have a more set role this year, not bounced around the lineup as much. I think he hits 25. Hopefully he stays healthy. Healthy, Yuri Slavkovsky. Uh, he had a great first game of the season. What do you think you can see from last year's first overall pick this year? Four goals in thirty-nine games as a rookie. Uh, he looked good opening night. That's one game, though. I'm gonna say twelve. I'm going to go a little bit higher for Slav. Uh, I know that he didn't have the greatest start to the preseason, but the last game of the preseason, he was really engaged. And last night against the Leafs, I thought he was one of the best players on either team. Uh, he was physical. He was winning battles all over the ice. He was uh, playing well defensively. He was getting his looks. It ended up being uh, passes that got him on the score sheet. But uh, I think he's going to hit 20 this year. I think he's going to surprise everyone. It's going to be like around a 35, 40 point season for Slavkowski. Uh, uh, he's got a ways to go, but he's, uh, you know, he's progressing in a positive way. I, uh, you know, like what I've seen so far uh, to give him uh, an opportunity, opportunity to get 15 uh, would, would work in my books. Um, he's, uh, he's got the potential and now he just needs to hone it all and uh, get it, get it all together, which will happen with time. And Stu, what do you think about the captain, Nick Suzuki? What do you see for him this year? Well, 26 goals last season. You know, we're talking about all these guys scoring 20, 25 goals. You got to remember Suzuki and Caulfield tied for the team lead last season with 26. So if all these guys hit 20 or 25, it'll be a, a good season for the Canadians. Again, more of a passer than a shooter. I mean, he had 26 last season. I'm going to say 27 this season. He, he bumps that up by one. I'm going to drop Suzuki down a little bit. He had a really high shooting percentage last year. And I think for a lot of guys, the goal this year is to create more offense. But for Nick Suzuki, I think the goal this year is stable offense over the last two years. Now he's got to kick it into high gear on the defensive side. That line has to really play better in their own zone and keep the puck out of their own zone a little bit more. So I think Suzuki's going to be around 22. I'll, I'll give him 30 goals. Um, you know, we know how well he does pass the puck, but he also does have a great shot, mm -hmm. you know, uh, He's he's going to uh, he's going to create some uh, some some havoc in the opposition's end because he uh, he's not afraid to shoot it. So uh, I'll give him that number thirty five. Yeah, one of the power plays against the Leafs, I know is he you know he has that pass to, to Caulfield all the time, and he looked at Caulfield, he faked it, and then he fired it, and goalie made a heck of a save. So if Suzuki does more of that, Rick, you might be right. And finally, Sean Monahan, Andrew, what are your thoughts for him? In a Canadian's jersey, I think he scores fourteen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go one up on that 15 if he can stay healthy, which is the, the, the big question. He had six goals in 25 games last season, and the Canadians actually were had a winning record right around 500 before he got uh, hurt. He's, he's a huge – if he can stay healthy, he's going to be a huge part of this team. 
Can't right. believe you're going to price is right me there, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go with the twenty goal mark. I really like uh, his. His ability around the net. He's got great hands, and uh, you know, I think he, he he could. He's he scored goals before. He knows how to now. Like uh, Stu said, stay healthy, see what he can do, and I'm sure uh, from a co- contract standpoint, he's hoping that he scores fifty. Well, it was his 29th birthday on Thursday, and you think he's older than that, right? Because he's been around forever. But you remember, he started in the NHL when he was 18 years old, so. He's 29, his body's older, but hopefully, uh, you know, he's had a long time to recover uh, over a long summer, so hopefully he can't stay healthy. Maybe 29 goals then this year. <laughs> that would be good for him, a contract year. That would be. Uh, it would also mean the Canadians, if they wanted to deal him at the trade deadline, would get a lot. All right, well, that's all we have for you this week. And if you want to join the discussion, we'll leave a comment below. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel and subscribe to it as well. And turn on your notifications because then you'll know when we have new bonus episodes and other content release. And if you have a question for, a pa- for the panel, leave it below as well. We'd like to answer your questions throughout the season and sign up for the Gazette Hockey Inside Out newsletter. You just have to go to montrealgazette.com slash newsletters to do so. Of course, you can find out more about the Montreal Canadiens by going to the MontrealGazette.com website. Or you know what? Maybe you could even just pick up the newspaper. You know, do it the old-fashioned way. (laughs) Thank you for joining us. I'm Jessica Resnack from CBC Daybreak, your host. And I'm looking forward to seeing what Habs topics we have to talk about next week.